It's actually an Android. Oh, it's an attachment. Mm -hmm. So it's a camera attachment down here. And on the back, I set up a battery pack to charge the actual thing. So it's my own little Ghostbuster rig up. Um, but this, yeah, it's really cool. Um, so you guys can all see me in the picture, yes? See me, obviously. So when you take me out of the picture, it's gonna fluctuate. So as you can see, the trees obviously took on some of that orange. So what we're looking for in this is, I have it set up to white hot, which means black and blue are cold. So Jim, you're gonna be looking for those colder spots. And what we're looking for when you guys watch your video, and he's not gonna be able to catch everything because he's gonna be listening to the stories. He's going to be you know, paying attention to his surroundings. Moving blue areas or black. Sometimes it could just be even a yellow over top of an orange, but we're really focused on that blue and black just for the sake of the tour itself. I don't want to throw too much at you. This also will put a white outline around any kind of surface or object. So those trees over there in the distance actually have a white outline on them because they're a solid surface. It will do the same thing for anything that is considered a surface. It will not see through windows. It looks at windows and plain glass as an object. So you're only gonna be able to get the temperature of that object. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to hold this horizontal all night long. Cool. And there's a red square on there. That red square means that it's recording. So if you hit That's the red it. square and it turns to a circle, just hit it again, you'll have two videos I gotta splice together. It's more work okay. for me, no pressure. So, um, story, let's give you something that's going to kind of sit there and you can just kind of keep an eye on it. So, this is an EMF detector. This is actually going to measure electromagnetic fields. There are mm -hmm. three types of electromagnetic fields. She has one in your purse too, don't you? You said you had one of these? You no, 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 no. All right. So electromagnetic fields, the first type is from the Earth. That's why this is green. It's natural. Okay. The second one is man-made objects, cell phones, wiring, those kind of things. It gives off a pulse, a rhythm. We don't want that. We want the erraticism from the paranormal world. So when it starts going crazy, you need to let us know. No sound, just the light. Yep, you can actually just let it sit on the stroller. And it won't. It's not going to make any noise. It's not going to do anything. So you kind of have to keep an eye on it. So you can rig that up however you want to. All right, what else is going to be cool? All right, Randall, I'm going to give you. Is it record? Did mm -hmm. you pick up the Faraday wallet with it as well? No, I did not pick up that. This is nice because it will not turn it on inside the pouch. So, you know, sometimes oh. it'll accidentally turn on. Yeah, That's what happened when I put my leg down, they shut it off. Yeah, really cool. This is a spirit box. They already know what this is, but they're going to pay attention to the way we're going to... You guys know what these are? I haven't seen that one. This one is really cool. It does a couple of different things. It's not your normal... Okay. 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 Every single night. This one will actually record the entire frequency section. It's not going to record any of us. It's going to just record what the frequency speeds are. So if you've watched the ghost hunting shows, you know you hear that static. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what we're listening for are anything like I, I have a slowed down. So some of those what they call experts will turn it so fast that nothing else can come through besides a disembodied voice. What does that mean? Something from the paranormal world that's going to go over top of the static. Now what we're listening for are those things, but it could also be a DJ, a song lyric, or a commercial. So if you, it's going to sweep fast enough to where you can hear voices, but you might not be able to make out most of them. Right. Well, actually, even one word. I might ask what color is the building. This is, again, I'm good. That's proof enough. So I'm going to set it up to record and show you. You only need one button, and that's the, the volume, which is at the top. So when I'm talking, and obviously I'm telling a story, the location, we're going to turn it up. Okay. Yeah. 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 So when I'm talking, and obviously I'm telling the story of the location, you want to turn down. I'll say spirit box is down, and then when I'm done and say let's go explore, I'll say spirit box is up. So you can literally just turn the turnstile up. So we're going to get this sweeping. So it's sweeping now. I'm going to hit record. As long as that little SD is on there, that means it's recording. So that gadget is yours. And I don't need to turn it up. Not now. Well. I'm going to go through a couple more gadgets. Um, let's see what else do we want to go through. Um, but you have thermal, EMF. I'm trying to think what else records. Um, story, you want a digital camera for us? Yeah. All right. So digital camera, a couple of rules with this guy. Uh, don't mess with the settings, only because I don't have a flash setup on it. It's a simple point and shoot. I will turn it on. It'll turn off when you're not using it, obviously. But there's two buttons, and on and off, and then the point and shoot. I don't want any false positives. What do I mean by that? So, we're taking pictures of this building right here. This window is going to give me a glare back from a flash. And then i got to dive into the light. i got to see if it moved. 
because there's no flash on this, when you're taking pictures, they, your hands need to be pretty still. So, otherwise it's gonna create a blur. The car's passing, I gotta kinda of analyze all the different things. I'm looking for those different areas. None of you can be in the picture. I can be in as many as you want. I'm not having you guys sign waivers and legalities. So, that's the way that works. So, that's a simple point to shoot. I normally don't hand out to teenagers because they have no idea what the heck that thing is. Um, I'm going to show you guys what the other gadgets are only because I know Virginia is super interested. <laughs> <laughs> so I just take pictures whenever I feel like I should? Yep, okay. yep that's it. As long as none of us are... Just as long, exactly. If we don't care. And the settings are already <laughs> set to be the optimal... Yep. Uh, my wife is the graphic designer and photographer for oh, my yeah, business, so anything you catch <laughs> will go to her and she will analyze for you. This is the Neuralizer for Men in Black. None of you guys are going to remember a damn thing when they're done. <laughs> so, it's really a grid pen. And is this the same one you have? It does the green dots? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what this guy will do is in the event we actually catch something, it'll be up here, not on the ground. Um, quick demonstration, and I'll try to keep the smoke away from the baby. Has everybody kind of seen that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, any, like, the spirit's not going to stay in there that long. It's literally going to be a glitter. And I'm just going to keep this handy in case we actually need it. Um, the other, what is that? The other one that I use. Is a grid box. The neat thing about this one is that it's actually full squares. So the squares on this guy, in the event we actually capture something in the middle of it, and we actually capture a picture, I can actually take this, and the reason why it's in grids, like an actual box, is I can take that and put it in 3D software and get the full 3D form of whatever we want. So we can actually see a person or whatever that you know, came through. So, super cool, relatively new, haven't caught anything with it yet. So, maybe kinda, we will tonight if you use maybe. it. Maybe, I'll keep it handy. Um, I do use two different types of thermometers to verify what's going on with the thermal imaging camera. Um, so, we should all recognize what these guys are, right? Right. Oh, that is cool, too. All right, so yeah. this one will only measure what the red dot touches, okay? So right now, the ground, it says 90.3. Uh, let's say Jim is standing where I am, and he's got the thermal pointed at the wall, and he says, hey, Nick, that wall has a blue spot right in the middle of it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test all the way across the wall, and if it's the same temperature, I now know that that blue spot is between Jim and the wall. Does that make sense? Am mm -hmm. I getting your name right? Yep. Wow, look at me. Pretty good. <laughs> I'm usually horrible at names. Then I take this guy, and then I start measuring from Jim to the wall so that way I can actually find the cold spot because it's going to measure ambient temperature. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep these guys handy um, only because we kind of do a little experiment at the end of the tour to see if the building is haunted that night. Um, so guys, I'm going to tell the same story as I tell every night, but I cannot guarantee what's going to happen once we get going. That's the cool thing about this and why everybody's tour gets uploaded to my website. Virginia's already been all over it. and. You guys get to review the data, and I give you a quick analysis of everything I've caught as a collector. It is the third. Yes. Yeah. September third, nine p.m. So you guys will have this full audio as well. So you guys are going to get back tomorrow morning one text to my website link. It'll have he's taking right. pictures of me. Um, <laughs> you're going to have a full video, full audio, full spirit box recording, and pictures that story is going to take for us but i also use a couple of apps just to kind of enhance things i do keep a backup emf in case your batteries get drained so i do have a battery drainer on the way which is another super cool you might want to look into mm -hmm. sorry she's a collector like me <laughs> um, but i also use two different kinds of spirit boxes on my phone so the first one i use is actually meant to be a game and a hoax most of it is actually bullshit so if 80 percent of it jump we don't need it it's the 20% that'll actually be relatable. Wow, I got a whole group of smokers. This is great. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep it away from you. I'm a, I vape, obviously, very heavily. Um, but anyway, this guy will actually give us a list of words right here in the center of my phone. So as the words come up, it'll stay there until the next one comes up. So I'll show you that one. And it'll save it for us in a list. My last group only had 49 words. I get an average of 45 to 65. Oh, Sometimes it goes all the way up to 93. Uh, I'm going to clear that out. So that way you guys start off fresh. The next one that I use is a reverse spirit box, and this is for your audio that you're listening for. Now I'm gonna play it for you guys, so that way you guys get a gist of what you're listening for. Um, what this guy will do is it'll take those same FM frequencies that you're using, uh, we don't have another spirit box besides yours, uh, and it'll reverse it. So in the event something actually comes through, we can hear it very clearly in plain English 
coming to us as an actual answer or piece of communication. So let me turn this up so you guys can get a gist. All right, I have a question. Yes. Just now you, <laughs> you did mention that you do bring it home. Tell us the experience and so what you do for yourself. So I will tell you a lot of times the spirit boxes will call me out by name. Um, in the event that that actually happens, you will usually see me walk away mm. to try to, like, I'm not a religious person, but I, I kind of, I ask, my grandmother's always with me. She's already passed and she stays with me all the time. Every mm -hmm. psychic I go to see, every psychic I hang around with, they say, how's Anne? I said, ask her yourself. She's standing right here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't claim to be a psychic. I don't claim to be any of those things. Mm. But that's when I asked my grandmother, mm. help me out here. I'm trying to work. You know, just, you know collecting data. Yeah, too. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Um, and I do kind of like when I go through all of the gadgets and I'm cleaning everything, it's still a little, it's a thought. My grandmother's helping me keep your gadgets clear and pure. We're not going to go any place tonight that's like, oh my God, scary, where shit's going to jump out at you. Mm -hmm. That's right. not what this tour is about. It's about collecting the data and actually helping my PhD dissertation that starts next year for my doctorate of ghosts. So, nice. yeah, all of this data you guys are collecting, I'm gonna be using it and writing a book about it. So, <laughs> that's what I do. Um, but anyway, so you guys are standing right next to a place that was called Big John's. Big John was a football player for the 1947 Giants. That's when he was drafted. His name was John Kennedy. And John used to sit in the back of this bar and kind of nod off to the bartender if they were of age or not. And the bartender would either cut them off let have a few drinks. So one night, two guys come in, John cuts them off, they get mad, they leave, they come back the next night, and they steal the cash register from the front of the bar. Big John pulls out his 45, shoots, and kills one. Now, uh, Saturday is actually Big John's birthday. I'm actually expecting Big John to come through the spirit box that you're holding, and possibly some of, I got the word linger, which means I'm taking too long. So um, I will try to relate everything, but most everything you guys are going to see in your highlighted word list tomorrow is going to be about 20%. But anyway, um, so John's birthday is coming up, and also his anniversary of his death is, is in September. So I'm expecting September to be a big month. I get his football player teammate names. I get all kinds of things. His number was 52. Um, so that's a oh, bullet hole. And the reason why I told the story is because the bullet hole is actually still in the front of the building. <laughs> the previous owner called this place King Rumbar. I'm sure you've seen that on Google Maps only covered it up with a panel because it was kind of his ode to Big John. Big John was a big deal around here. So, with that being said, anybody that sits in the front of this bar is said to get a little queasy, not feeling well, dizzy, headaches, those kind of things. I bring that up because I don't know how any of you are going to be able to react to any of the paranormal activity that we're going to go through. Even though I can't guarantee we're going to catch anything, I can't guarantee if you guys are not going to feel sick or not. So, if any of you, please speak up for your partner because mm -hmm. it's the person that gets sick that says, no, let's keep going. Please speak up. I know it's hot tonight. We kind of debunk things a little bit, but if it gets to be too much, I you will got move. Gatorade, us. water, I do. anything you need. I left I everything it. in the car. I don't want to carry too much. <laughs> You're already carrying too much with that bag. That's um, right. So the other ghost that is said to be here. Did you guys take any other Charleston tours at yeah, all? Last time we were here, we did the Old we did City a ghost, ghost tour. Did the jail. Okay. What we else did, did we did do? We did another walking. Yeah, All the bulldog stuff, regular. I'm sure. Yeah, my consent. Really they're like bulldog ones. dominant over here. Or something. Yeah, that's okay. They don't like me too much. Yeah. <laughs> and they're actually right down the street. This is another reason why I start here. Because <laughs> all of their tours walk by and go, what's that guy doing? <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, the I other... we were just going to, you were just going to be walking around with the EFT thing nope. and that was it. No, so no, you, uh, this is out. interactive. Yeah, pretty cool. So we had an earthquake here in 1886. Every tour talks about it. That's why I asked if you guys took a tour or not. Yes. Um, the mantle that you guys see above there um, actually wraps around the front of the building as well. This is where the first death occurred from that earthquake. Apparently a piece of that mantling fell off and struck him in the head. And it is said that his ghost can be seen right here on this bay. I haven't caught anything. It's a legend. So we're going to take it at that. Alright, so they're pretty good on COVID stuff. 
tell me if you get not feeling well, ready to go ghost hunting. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what their gadgets do. All right, let's go. Let's go take a look. Oh, and smoking is a way to not wear a mask too. So if somebody stops you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try to hit as many of my spots as possible because the group is small. Um, but because of the heat, I'm going to try to walk a little slower, especially with the babies out. Um, oh, don't worry about us. We're fine. Don't worry about everybody. That's my job. <laughs> That's just who I am. So a couple things right here before we get into the lot. The crew cafe is haunted. Um, I did a quick walkthrough with an EMF. Did get some activity upstairs in the bathroom. I might be able to debunk it by some of the crazy wiring in that place. But the problem with it is that it's a, it used to be a slave home. So obviously it's been expanded and raised. Slave homes did not have addresses. So it's very hard for me to do all the research and find out what actually happened there. They say it was a suicide. I'm trying to, COVID got in my way, so I gotta do that investigation later. For you history buffs, the stop sign down there, um, I want you to keep in mind that the peninsula of Charleston used to be much skinnier back in the 17 and 1800s because it's all man-made for about a block or so. So the water is this way and was much closer. So Revolutionary War, a ship rolls up, shoots a cannon, and the ball lands right at the stop sign. No deaths, no tragedies, no paranormal equipment, anything down there. Just a cool little history fact that I found I was like on Mark Jones's website. He's another fellow author. So cool stuff. So you guys are standing actually in the red barn lot is what I like to call it. So this is the, the barn where they keep the horses for the carriage rides. So here's what I want you guys to kind of keep in mind. First off, they also, this is aged to about 1860 to 1920 because this is also kids. where they kept the horses that delivered milk to no, Charleston. Okay. So it's got some age to it. The horses are still in there. So we're going to be relatively quiet when we're here. There are vehicles here. So I'm going to say if you're going to take pictures, no vehicles in the pictures. People get weird about that. Like no license plates and stuff? No license plates. People get really, I've had people come out screaming at us about, because the next place we go to is another parking lot. And I promise it's not lots all night long. but. It's a place where they get real, it's, it's a heavily used place. So they, the next place is definitely no pictures. Um, EMF will either start where you're standing or it'll wait until we leave. It's never consistent in here. This is kind of your play area. I'm gonna bounce around with all of you. I don't have any other history other than what I told you about the red barn. However, this place gives me names. It gives me Big John's people and his teammates, Big John himself. Um, I have another ghost story that I just heard about in one of these buildings that I can't reveal until I actually validate it. So if something comes through and you hear something weird, by all means, let me know. Um, also keep in mind too that if I ask a question to my spirit box, the answer might come up on yours and vice versa. So you, I might ask a question and, and ask whoever's with me to tell your spirit box the answer. So that way you turn around and say, green. And what, like, what does that mean? Just whatever you hear. Um, Keep that at a very close audible level because you will spook the horses. Nobody here has lasers, so I'm not worried about lasers going into there because it will spook them and they will kick. It scares the shit out of everybody. Um, nice slow sweeps on the video for us. Um, you can ask questions too because you have an audio file that it's going to pick up on. So you're going to have two sets of audio. So this is again kind of a teach and train, let you guys play around with your stuff a little bit and that way I can either help you with your spirit box. Um, what did I give you? Nothing. I am using that one stuff. Are you serious? <laughs> I didn't give you anything? That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. You all have it. Well, what, what in my bag haven't you used before or don't you have? She used it all. <laughs> Do you want to try I'm like cool, the red dread box? Okay. No, I'm, cool. I'm sorry. I, she has okay. that one. You were holding something and I was like, I'm, oh, I'm she's got something. So I moved on. <laughs> all right. So again, Let's kind of toy around with this, walk around slowly, see where the EMF gets hot. Wherever it starts going erratic, that's where you stop and that's where you start listening. Is that fair? I mean, you could turn it up and listen the whole time. And when you're asking questions, ask them the same question about every 20 seconds for about a minute and a half to two minutes. Wait for them to muster enough energy to get an answer. When there's a team of 10, everybody's asking questions because I have another spirit box that goes out too. And it's all, everybody's, ah, where are you? What's your name? And it's like, nobody can really grab enough 
with data. Um, so let's kind of walk through slowly. We're going to spend about five to eight minutes here and kind of see where it goes. It did. It did. Spell out of house. Not yet. Did you recently fall? No. Maybe I'm going I don't to fall. normally get something that quick. <laughs> what did he say? He said, as soon as he walked in here, something called out my name. He said, then he said something about fall. He said, did you recently fall? And I said, no. No, it's, it's hers. It's hers. This black that I'm getting over here, that's probably the meter it's picking up. Mm -hmm. This is black over here, see? 
It's probably that electrical meter it's picking up. Oh, yeah. I said the black here is probably the electrical meter it's picking up, right? Um, actually, it's past that. So it's going to catch the air. Anything that's like see through the trees, mm -hmm. it's literally going to be between that pole in the tree and the distance of it. It's going to not determine what that temperature is back there, so it's right. going to black it out. It's going to be the coldest area. Okay. A good catch. Just on how all their gadgets work. I know you're still learning about yours. We're gonna actually go learn some history about Charleston now. How about that? important to Charleston. Um, this used to be the Eliza and Charles Pinkney Mansions. So none of your ghost stories are going to talk about this place. And it's literally my famous husband. Just watching him over there. Yeah, he, he ducked yeah. out he ducked out of here when we walked in. Yeah, he was. No, I was gonna say that light I was, I was gonna say too, that light is really well, going to talk about that too so it doesn't always do that. I'll kind of show you the demonstration I did with the light too. But Eliza and Carl Pinkney, the mansion was in the front, Eliza's garden was lined up with a blue dumpster, and then the uh, servant was both on the back of the So, so Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles and had a nephew named Charles. So it was three Charles. I'm going to go back to this. this place has only let me down twice where I had absolutely nothing. So that kind of proves to me that it's nothing right that this is legit. So the two, the son and the nephew, were signers of our Constitution. So super important. Obviously, the son was raised here. Now, I don't care about politics. Charles, the father, was a big deal in Charleston too. But Eliza is what fascinates me because we've taken another tour. Charles heard me tell talk about India. started planting the indigo here and had to move it further inland to their plantation and turned it into a giant cash crop. Now we're talking mid 1700s, so 1760s, 1770s. She was also the businesswoman that sold indigo overseas. Now what is indigo exactly? It creates a blue dye that makes your blue jeans blue. We still use it today. 
So if you're interested in indigo, uh, Jeff Goldblum actually did an episode on denim on Disney Plus on his show The World According to Jeff Goldblum. Um, and I actually show you the blue dot. Um, but it started right here, literally where you're standing. So a couple facts about Eliza that you can ask me this year. I'm going to kind of wander myself. This is an absolute no picture zone. So kind of keep that in mind. But Eliza was the second wife named Eliza for travels. So you can find out what her maiden name is because she goes by Eliza Blank. Because cars project heat downwards, right. so you can kind of see like which cars have been here the longest. So yeah, these Garthy, like these <laughs> these have been here for a while. They probably work right there mm -hmm. at the five church restaurant. Mm -hmm. All of them have been here for a while. This one. So if one pulls in on a weekend, yeah. this this lot is pretty busy. Like yeah. cars come in and out. All of them have been here for a while. So as soon as Randall walks behind the dumpster, I got the word garbage and then gross. As soon as it came up. The dumpster, the color keeps changing right here. You see it? Mm -hmm. Zero. That's not the number I'm looking for. Eliza, how many people are with me? Count the baby. Uh, 
go over there and check it out. No, you can feel it on the ground. That can be in front. The ground's going to go in different temperatures because you can feel the wind. You're oh. going to get little different wind pockets from time to time. I've analyzed this ground probably hundreds of times by now, trying to figure out what's actually going on. So I have caught a glimmer back here, but again, you can see like the dents in there. Are the dents showing up or is it a different temperature? No idea. I'm talking literally right here. So there's, there's some dents. It should have somewhat of a different color because the metal is, is different, probably weaker. Here with a line. Yeah, so the blue. Yeah. Get the dents off. So that's the car. That's the car? Mm -hmm. Try to turn this one in. No, it's not coming up. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Once I blow it up on the TV, I might be able to see something. Mm. No, we thought there was something, but there was, he said the thing said garbage, and it said ill. After Randall walked from behind it, and I'm like, it is changing colors a little bit near the garbage. And we went over there to go look. We said, oh, maybe the dents that were on the garbage were doing that. But we couldn't find anything. This is what the mansion needs to be. Okay. Yeah, that's
close to that with the servants, the slaves. So it's a possibility Tony could have been here at one given time. Or in and out, because she took in a lot of like family boarders that were just in town or this, that, and the other. So it's a good possibility. I can't confirm that. Okay. Um, but I did. I was asking how many people were with us, and it gave me the number zero, like on the word list. And I'm like, yeah, that's a big no. That's, <laughs> I'm actually not getting much, uh, which is weird. We do have the EMF. We did oh, catch some yeah. weird cold spots near right. the dumpster, and we do have the words garbage and gross that came oh, through. While you were standing there? While, while Randall was back there. Oh, okay. So when he, as soon as I watched him go through it, I notated it on the audio. A lot of times you'll hear me say rewind by five seconds in your audio. That's literally, I just heard something, and I'll say what it is, and that way you can rewind and listen to it for yourself. So um, we're actually going to go on to the next spot. It's about four blocks away. Um, it's usually a mask up area. Uh, keep filming. Um, obviously, you can keep listening. Your EMF is going to go crazy on that street because the electrical lines for our parking meters and the crosswalks are under the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So it's going to make it go nuts. I tell people that on purpose so that way you know I'm not making things up. Um, if you've been listening to your spirit box along the way, by all means do so. I'm listening for names for our next location. And they like to pop up on my way there. So I will tell you that story once we get there. So, Let's go take a hike. Let's go check out an alley. Yeah. You guys got that stroller? You need a hand? Okay. I had two kids, and, and I know how it is. So I'm going to be stopping what do you, all the time. What do, you, what do you mean you had two kids? <laughs> They're here in spirit, no. Um, so, they're older. My, my oldest daughter's 21, and my youngest is 14. So, like, and that's from a previous wife. So, yeah. I usually throw people off with that because I wear the ball cap on purpose to take off 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of Yeah. Okay, go hang out and drink and break the bottles. So that's usually a good picture spot too. I haven't caught anything there yet, but if you guys are obviously visiting Charleston, that's a big deal. Um, the market right now, you can see the tables are kind of lined up right to the windows. You can't walk through the center of it anymore. You actually have to go on the outside of the market and visit each window for each vendor. So it's set up a little bit different because of COVID. It's just interesting to see.
usually when she's not with me and I don't hear her voice, it's always... Shadow people down here. I got weird light stuff that my wife can't see. Be careful, because I just hit my toe on a brick. Is this the alleyway where the guy said the door? No, that's the next one. Okay. <laughs> that's the next one. So you guys are actually in Lodge Alley right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the building I'm leaning on is Lodge Alley Inn, and we passed at the front of it when we were on East Bay Street. It has its own ghost, but nothing related to Charleston, so I don't normally talk about it. Um, this particular alley is one of our oldest streets in Charleston. Um, the bricks that you're walking on are clay bricks, so that's very unique to Charleston. People used to live here. So I told you I was waiting for names to come through. It's a big deal because I do get the same name that keeps occurring in this location over and over and over again. And I have the whole list of residents of everybody who's ever lived here going back to 1790. Um, so getting any type of names or occupations through here, the people here were very poor. Um, they know that because they did an archaeological dig in between the bricks and they found their silverware, some of their tools, some articles of their clothing, and realized that they were lower class. Also keep in mind, the waters this way was much closer, so the smell down here would have been much stronger than the ocean coming up this breezeway. You can look up pictures of this, this alley where it actually had people sitting out on their front stoops. It's crazy. So this alley is, is obviously transverse quite a bit, and then where you were taking pictures, Magnolia's restaurant is supposed to be one of the best in town. Um, I don't eat out, so you have to kind of take everybody's word for it that if you're looking to have a good place to eat, that's it. Um, what does this mean when it's just solid? So that is a rhythm to me because it's just solid, which means it's coming from the builder. So I don't normally get a whole lot of eroticism here. It's more about this guy here. The wall up there to your left that looks like a half wall, you can see the branches sticking out of the top, is where I 
about the shadow person. So I did have a full group of 10 that night, um, and something yellow was against the wall. My group was already at the end, waiting for... Oh, people do work there. They'll come out for their break. Yeah. Um, but I did have a picture that somebody took um, that actually had a shadow <laughs> in it. And I think it's so I put the two together, put the timestamps, they match. So I actually have a shadow person up on that left-hand wall in the evidence pages. So when you guys get your pictures, they actually go to Facebook and you have your own folder on my page. And you can download them if you want to. But there's also an evidence folder. So anything that's weird or wonky or stuff you can't explain, that's where that stuff goes. It all goes in the one folder to prove to new people this is legit. I'm not just fooling around, obviously. So we're going to cut through here. And uh, Jim's already asked about the dual family. So that's where we're going to actually be heading. Right. Yeah, really cool spot. It is actually the one of the biggest hot spots for ghost tours. It's like very busy. So I told the story just outside the lot and then we walk through it because we have gadgets that were actually Kenzie. That could be a last name too. So yeah, Kenzie. So it seems kind of a modern name, first name, but I'm gonna look at the list of names again and see if I can't find the Kenzie. So that's interesting. Um, but I tell it outside just because we yeah, have the gadgets to prove it while we're walking through. Um, so let's go take a look at that. So Jim, you're doing a great job keeping slow. Ooh. Is it fluctuating? No, I'm saying, what is this white stuff that comes in? Every once in a while, I'll get white so that's stuff. So the, that's the layout of the bricks. It's recognizing the bricks right outside of there. Mm -hmm. So you've seen it kind of flash when she had her right. white. So they're, it's going to recognize each one of these bricks as so an it's recognizing the bricks over here. Yep, okay. exactly. It's recognizing the doors. That's what those are. Mm -hmm. I did have another shadow come out of here. So. On this door on the left, I had a cold spot come out, and then all of a sudden it looked like an extension of it went in a different direction. It was very odd. So it was just a, a weird anomaly that I couldn't yeah. explain. The video wasn't super clear, but it was enough to say that cold air is, should be shooting straight out, not going off in a tangent. So let's take a walk through and see what we find. And then if you want to take pictures behind us when we're all out of the alley, by all means, let's get one in reverse. See what happens there. Oh, does that just work? What's that? Oh, it's working. Last week we went to the haunted cemetery and the camera was there when I'm walking the cemetery. Mm. And she kept telling me, didn't you check it? I'm like, I check it at home. <laughs> it's very bumpy down here. Is residential. Can I take a picture of you? You can. Nobody's gonna stop you. I just tried to uh, be a little bit sweet over here. When I had the lasers out, I told the kids no lasers. Because that gentleman's sitting there, that's kind of stupid.
that had no tours. It was the only full moon this month. Mm. So, I mean, our moon yeah. tonight is at like 96%. Um, I did get the, the word skip come up, and there was a skip that played with John Kennedy from Big John. Had it before. Um, but then the word Austin came up, as in Austin, Texas. So I'm going to look to see where Skippy came from and kind of validate if that's actually him or not. So, um, obviously, some great pictures of St. Philip Church, the people, this is how people we have in town. Um, you can see it for I don't know how many blocks. Uh, but it's the alley on the other side of this wall in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Somebody walking by, named Ryan Ryan, he's a lawyer here in town, low you know, he's a lowly attorney, and he says, you don't want to stay here, and you can come out, and they're ready to go in for it. He's taking a quick time to search for you, he's got a mile and a half, and he runs the room upstairs, so he becomes friends. However, the doctor's practice is going really well. He's making a lot of money, he's making a lot of money. He becomes one of the Whistling Doctors. Very happy. You can actually Google the Whistling Doctor, this is a story you get. However, in this case he played, it had to sit in different parts of the theater because, and if it were correct, it was very relevant to the story in college, because they were different parts of the hire. So we talk about the play on the way home. One night they went to see Richard III. The doctor loved to win the actor's in the town. Ralph did not. The two got into an argument, and then the next thing you know, they turned into a pink pop party on the doctor's fiance back home in uh, Rhode Island. So the two get mad, they separate. <coughs> Doctor, or, I'm sorry, Ralph, the attorney in town, is from Charleston, so he has ties. So he calls up a guy named Amelia. Kind of a weak stretch, but anyway. Um, so he gets a hold of the paper and writes in the paper what he can say to the doctor in the city of Charleston. Taking our money, he's not from here. So okay. the doctor rebuttals with, we're going to go to the Jewelers Alley and finish this up. We come down, back to back, take 20 cases, turn, the doctor points his gun in the air, and he shoots. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just wanted to prove it wrong. However, Ralph took two shots below the knee, and the doctor drops. He doesn't kill him. Now, the loser of the duel, of any duel, is what? Dead, right? So, right up to the right over here is a gate where the loser would go through and go straight to the grave and kill a center. That didn't happen. So his friends picked him up, and they took him over to 59 Church Street, where he died 10 days later. The doctor can't mend himself. And I went to 1863, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So the, the story goes, because he was known as a whistling doctor, if you walk through here, you can hear him whistling. Or you can hear gunshots. You have the audio running. Obviously, I want you to continue paying attention to the spirit box, because Ralph does like to come through. And I did get the word threat. So the threat would have been the doctor threatening Ralph to come down here to lose out, which to me is very, very relevant. Um, a lot of times I'll get words, I did get the word medication when we were in Lodge now. So, the doctor would have prescribed medication, but I do get like doctorate, um, college, those kinds of things. Things that would have wrapped around his doctor, his doctor. Um, but again, I'm going to show you guys this here. Did you get the medication? Yeah. So, okay. um, the other weird thing about this alley, the bricks get older as you walk along. So as we're walking, these bricks up here were in 1990, they got replaced. Near the end, we have bricks that were actually sun-dried by slave food. So the fingerprints are still in the bricks, and we have one full hand. However, it is a residential area. Somebody lives on Philadelphia Island. I will point it out to the person behind me, which is a very small group. Take a quick look, take a picture if you'd like. It would happen kind of quickly and not, you know, disrupt the camp. Um, we will claim that those fingerprints are false. We don't know why. We claim that, but we do have those kind of bricks in three different areas here, three in the hall, and three in the hall. So you can actually just Google uh, fingerprints or handprints in Charleston, and you'll see the person for your art article that will tell you exactly where to go. Um, I think it was a great article actually. Um, so nice and slow on the camera. I don't know what that noise was. But even during the daytime, we're two blocks deep into the daytime. How do you want that to be I don't think I want to 
I usually yeah, look for the quiet guy on purpose, just so you know. story in a cemetery. Yeah, it won't catch with the digital camera I give you, but if you want to take your own photos. Oh, I'm just thinking like yeah. story. Yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> You're on vacation, right? <laughs> Was somebody up there? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I picked up a hot spot up there in the morning. <laughs> yeah, then I saw this guy come around the corner. <laughs> yeah, so. Like, don't get me wrong, it's really cool. It's just, um, you see all these trash cans right here? Yeah. And, like, they love to walk around. This wall, though, back in the day, it was just common. They just find, like, a dead body every week. So, you have these trash cans.
He had no idea what he was doing. Silver Spoon Kid got himself into a bunch of debt. He was up to his ears in debt. Um, we also have the Bull Weevil in town. The Bull Weevil is a bug that eats cotton. So he's really up to trade. He's also depressed that his dad's dead. So, what's he do? He, sell, he doesn't sell it to the American government. He sells all his cotton to the British government. So, right in front of, of the Wagner building, if you go straight, it's kind of a park. So again, the water was much closer, so he can see the British ship rolling up. He's on the second floor of his office, which is in the front of the building. And they load up the cotton from the back of these garages by horse and buggy. It's all on one ship. If somebody gets too close to that cotton for the pipe, the whole ship catches fire, and everybody dies. George watches the whole thing from the second story. Some stories will tell you the third floor. Every time I've asked, it's been the number two or the second. Things like that that come up through the spirit boxes. So what happened is as he's watching all this, he can't pay up all his debt because the British is giving up money. His dad's dead, and his father's legacy is gone. So he piles up all the furniture, puts a captain's chair on the top, swings a noose, and hangs himself. It was the newsboy the next morning that caught him, seen him, the shadow of a swinging corpse on the corner when he went down to the corner to sell his papers. So it is also said that there was a window broken and a crow got in and got to him first. So those are all met a crow. Got yeah, like what? Right. That's crazy to me. So, a crow killed somebody? Well, he was already dead. He hung oh, and then it ate him. And then the crow came oh, in and probably yeah, packed some things sense. up. <laughs> so, like, what? the odd thing about this building, there's a couple of things. First off, we'll talk about the peak in the back. So, everybody kind of see where the, the roof comes to a point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull out my infrared thermometer. Oh, it's just going to charge up. That wood that I showed you so, on the phone. Before. In the front, of the building with the same shape, but there's a stone that takes over that corner. And five feet below that, there's the same type of stone. Okay? And I'm not just facing the water. I'm going to try to find that Oh, look, I got the word sun. Perfectly relatable. Okay. Hasn't been much activity until I look at things as a collective. Um, but anyway, so the, in the front of the building, it'll actually vary in temperature by 30 degrees. Yeah. And it doesn't happen all the time. Now, those stones in the front should hold the temperature from the water pretty well. There it is. All right, so I'm going to take the very top of the building's temperature with this gun. there's something else going on in that building tonight. Mm. Now, the other cool thing about this is when I'm looking at this building, where we came out of Philly Alley, <laughs> I missed that, that stage. Um, so, about a block where we came out of Philly Alley is a place called Krugan's Porch. So, you guys have actually maybe eaten there before, because it's very popular. It serves uh, breakfast. Krugan's Porch. Krugan was a dog. Um, is that the one that's, uh, it's the white one and someone died in the bathroom concert? Yes. So yeah. Zoe St. Amon is the person who will haunt that place and Kubi. I found out later, one of my guests told me, she actually used to be a concierge, so I, ver I verified it, um, that Coogan was a neighborhood dog that the construction crew that was renovating it into Coogan's porch are the ones that fed them, and when the dog died, they commemorated him by putting the statue in the memorial. Room. It wasn't Zoe herself. Zoe was a school teacher. That much I knew. She taught elementary school. So she was French, because her last name is Saint Amand. I get the words French, I get Hagenaut, I get all kinds of things. If I ask who's with us, George or Zoe, they'll tell me on my on my box. And then at that point I can ask, hey Zoe, what's your house now? And it will say things like food, table, fork, things that are simple that say restaurant to me. Um, again, this is all about putting a clues together. So even though you might not be able to hear some things tonight, I'm gonna listen to it in the morning, especially since you haven't really given me much. So I'm going to give you, it's okay, that's why we record the whole thing, so that way I can, does it still say SD on your little screen? Yes. Yeah, Perfect. Alright, so, um, and again, if you hear anything on yours, by all means. Um, so you're, again, we're going to be getting close to the eBay Street, we're actually going to go nuts on the EMF, you can take some pictures. I definitely want some pictures of the Blockner building, because that's where you can catch the shadow of the corpse, swinging. So, I haven't found anything yet. No, the porch, the porch is down there. We're talking about the window where George hung himself. Oh. So, at 
told you that that can't see through windows, but if you get a major temperature change, if one of your blue windows starts yeah. to turn black in the center, I need to know. Okay. So that way we can catch it and you hold it still as possible and kind of give us a, a documentary. Um, sorry, commentary is the word I was looking for. Uh, so we're going to cross twice legally and kind of see who we have. I'm going to turn up my spirit box because I did get the word sun. So I'm going to guess that it was sun, wage, possession, and better. So possession wouldn't be like a possession, like a demon inside of me. It would be more like, who owns it now? Um, is how I look at that. So, But I always get money terms when I'm talking about George. So it's either money, currency, wage. Um, that's a good word around this area. So again, let's go see if George is going to chat with me. Clock on the face. Clock on the face. Clock on the face. And there's another stop sign. We're going to stop him. We're going to go on this side. degree difference on the very top. Oh, everything's still the flame. Same types of questions. 
questions. Um, what was on the ship? What happened to it? Um, I've, I've got weird terms here that almost become a sentence. So it briefly became market. So at one point, this was a little shop. And at one point, it was a brewery where the brewery left because it was too haunted. They have to turn on by themselves, too many cold spots, they couldn't come and board. Those kind of things. Right. I also wait for that now to like tell it part of the story because I hate to say all of our business and wait for that thing to bring it home. But it happens a lot. So some of my extra like back pocket locations, like my smaller quick groups, there are a lot of businesses that left. They have black sheep that left. Um, obviously, it's really one more black was a Skippy that played with John Kennedy from Big John's. I know that because he's come through before there. So I'm going to look in and see if there was a Chris. I know it's a very common name, but if I have two teammates... I heard Noah. Noah? Noah? That was it, while we were in that parking lot with the dumpster. Okay. I'll have to look into that. So, you guys got me some pictures of... Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start... Gathering up the gadgets, we're going to call it a night and see what the data proves in the morning. Um, what did you guys think? A little bit more interactive than you were expecting? I know yep. you guys were all game. <laughs> you guys were all in. So go ahead and let's hit stop on your video and give